Hi, it's Bruce. It's Saturday, May 2nd, 2009. We've seen three shows over the last week and a half, but I want to start by plugging a couple things. I have nothing to do with these shows, but I want to plug uh, Things to Ruin. You just saw the postcard in film. It's my, one of my favorite shows by my favorite new composer, Joe Iconis, is coming back to Second Stage for, I believe, just five performances only. I urge you to call Second Stage and get tickets. There's uh, limited performances, May 4th, May 8th, May 10th, May 17th, and May 18th. Uh, and if you come on May 18th, Monday at 8th, you'll see Bill and I, because that's the performance we're going to. I highly recommend the talented cast and Joe Iconis' fabulous music. Joe will be at the piano. Uh, also, if you have not seen Reasons to be Pretty, I have no idea that why the box office isn't taking off. It's uh, having a little rough time. It's my favorite new play of the season. I urge you, go see Reasons to be Pretty. You won't be sorry. It's a wonderful play with great characters in it. Okay, last weekend we went to see Mary Stewart, a play written a long time ago by Friedrich Schiller and a new version and translation by Peter Oswald, a crisp and crackling new version. I'm not familiar with the Mary Stewart play. It's about Mary, Queen of Scots and Elizabeth, and uh, has two dynamite performances by two great British actresses, Janet McTeer and Harriet Walter. They're both quite brilliant. Um, if I had to choose one to sing, I like one uh, performance more, I'm going with Harriet Walter. I, she did a fabulous Lady Macbeth quite a few years ago at the Young Vic in London. I was privileged to see. Best thing in that production. Uh, this, this cast is aided by uh, great performances by Brian Murray and John Benjamin Hickey. And an uh, actor I don't know, Chandler Williams, is a great Mortimer directed by Phila Lloyd, and uh, it's uh, got, it's modern, and it's got drama and tension and great acting chops. The women are, the two queens are more or less in Elizabethan great gowns, and all the men are in modern dress day suits. Um, I highly recommend this if you like uh, British history, British historical plays, classical British great acting. Uh, Modern set and uh, lighting is stunningly done. Uh, I was taken in. Now, again, this might not be for everyone. Somebody may find it like dry, but I was into it through the whole thing. So, two thumbs up for Mary Stewart. A uh, really great day in the theater. We've had some great revivals this year. And now for something completely different. Last night we saw Why Torture is Wrong and The People Who Love Them by Chris Durang. A new play by Chris Durang is always an event. And I urge you that if you're a Chris Durang fan, you must go see this. I think it's only playing another week. Um, Christine Nielsen, of course, consummate Chris Durang actress, gives a wonderfully hysterical performance. How that woman does it? I don't know. She's a looney tune on stage. Uh, Nicholas Martin directed uh, uh, very well, and Laura Benanti in a comic role as the lead. Uh, Richard Poe, John Pankow, an actor who I most admire, and a very, very sexy uh, Amir Arison as the, uh, maybe he's a terrorist. We don't know. Uh, but I think we find out. Any Chris Durang comedy that has Enid Bagnall, Tom Stoppard, and Brian Friel jokes, uh, along with his standard uh, Republicans, Democrats, blue-red jokes, is uh, worth going to. Where I have maybe an issue with this uh, Durang piece is the ending, which which I, I, I understood. It does completely switch things around. And uh, I understand it. I'm not so sure it was so satisfying for me. I've got to chew this one over. But um, it's certainly worth a trip if you're a Durang fan and if you want uh, a couple of really good laughs at the expense of uh, uh, Tom Stafford and Brian Friel. I especially admire the Brian Friel uh, 
joke because uh, that's how I feel about Brian Frail. Uh, why torture is wrong in the people who love him. It's at the public. Uh, pr probably not much longer, but I'm sure this piece, like uh, most Duran plays, will be done around the country everywhere. So, uh, great work, Chris. Really admired this one. Uh, had a great time. We doubled over laughter a lot. And uh, I think about that ending. Well, we've just seen apples, oranges, and pears this week. Uh, everything's completely different. Mary Stewart, Why Torture is Wrong by Durang, and Rooms, A Rock Romance. Um, I enjoyed Rooms. Uh, if you want a little offbeat thing, that's a two-character musical. It's a, a rock romance. It's got a great rock score by uh, Paul Scott Goodman, who wrote uh, the score in Bright Lights, Big City. Uh, he did the book... Uh, lyrics and music, and he was ably uh, abetted in the book writing by his wife, Miriam Gordon. Uh, Scott Schwartz directed uh, two very nice performances by Leslie Kritzer and Doug Krieger. Um, it's done in a heavy Scottish accent. Doug pulled this off pretty well. Uh, Leslie, sometimes I thought she was from Long Island there. She gets a heavy accent and then it sort of fades. Uh, Leslie should keep on her uh, working on a Scottish accent as a, on a through line. Uh, the score, as I said, is great. I think it's based on the authors themselves, Paul and Miriam's romance. And let me tell you, I'm just glad I wasn't in a room with them while they were getting along, because it has its ups and downs. Uh, it's interesting. It's, uh, uh, it's being recorded, and I think I would buy the score to hear again. And it's simple. It has a great rock group. I have a little trouble with the characterizations. I actually think that Doug Krieger is probably trying to channel Paul Scott Goodman, and uh, sometimes that's not necessarily a great thing, maybe. He gets a little creepy now and then. Well, Paul Scott did have his alcoholism issues, which are all covered in the musical. But it's at the New World stages. Uh, it's quite an enjoyable evening, and uh, it's nice to hear Paul Scott Goodman's rock score. Uh, looking forward to the CD, actually. All right, boy, we did cover a lot this week.